Media Media Corporation, home of the MCE Max. I'd like to thank you for joining us as we continue along in our presentation series. My name is Todd Gunderson, the Vice President of Sales and Marketing, and today we have a special guest with us, Mr. Noah Bethel, the Vice President of Product Development. Welcome, Noah. Hello, and thank you for having me. As always, we're excited to present our case studies that are, are given to us by our, our good users out in the field, and today is no different. Uh, this comes to us from one of our utility industry users, and we're very happy to uh, bring this case study to life and show you how inrush startup current test prevents catastrophic pump failure. So without further ado, let's get into the actual data and, and analyze it with our, with our VP of Product Development, Mr. Noah Bethel. So here we go, Noah. During routine testing using the MCE Max, the senior CBM specialist came across the following data. Well, let's take a look at the motor first, right? We have a 4,000 volt, 3,000 horsepower, 409 full load amps, 355 RPM. And what we always like to tell our customers is look at this number down here, 240 slots and 196 bars. Well, that's not normal information on the nameplate, is it? It's not always there. And the older the motor, the less likely it is to be there. So that's good information. This is a good uh, by the technician to go in, to, by the specialist to go in, get the get this number uh, in his database so that he knows how many bars he's dealing with and how many slots. And he probably got that from his motor shop, or maybe he found it from the actual the original equipment manufacturer. Right. If he didn't hold the manufacturer hostage to get that information, then he probably did. It does have a good relationship with the motor shop, requires on a motor repair specification, showed up at the shop, and they counted them together. You never know, but it's, it's certainly good information for us to have. Right. So kudos to the specialist for getting that information. So here we are, Noah, an inrush test. Does this look normal? Absolutely not, and I do I do say that based on my knowledge that this is a circulating water pump. Obviously, if this was a uh, a function that was repeat had repeated load changes, you know, on a regular basis, it might be considered more normal. But on a circulating water pump, moving water shouldn't be such a struggle. Um, if you've ever heard me talk about inrush startup in public, you know, it's one of my favorite tests. It has it tells so much about not just the motor but the load, and these fluctuations are certainly not normal. Yeah, and so what's always nice is, okay, we have a one-time test here. This was taken in 2010. Do we have any data before this? Always the question. Yeah. And in this case, you can see here our 2008 test. It looks pretty smooth, right, Noah? It's ideal for a circulating water pump. You know, it's moving water very steady. The torsional loads are not changing. Uh, so this is everything you'd expect. You're looking at the full load amps. I'm sorry, the uh, RMS envelope amperage on the left of 420 amps. And this is another good piece of information um, for these cooling water towers. Now we're going to look at the demodulated spectrum in 2008. And what stands out here? Well, a lot of things we look at for DMOD, especially when we're, you know, we're not only looking at electrical faults, but we also want to identify mechanical faults as well. We do see a lot of broadband energy, not unusual for a pumping application, uh, but we want to focus in on some of the peaks and the overall value uh, of, of energy that is portrayed here, we're down around 0.1 dB. And this is going to be an important piece of information as we look ahead at, at tests taken later. Sure. And here we go. Here's our 2010 test. Of de uh, with the demodulated spectrum. Wow, what a change. Yeah, 10 times is huge. Not only do we have a, a, a generic increase in the, in, the, in the general broadband energy, but we have some peaks jumping out of the spectrum. And we, what we want to do is run the math on this and try to back calculate that to some type of pump information, maybe a blade pass frequency, something else in the actual machine train. But regardless of what those spectral peaks are linked up to, a 10 times increase in the noise level is a big deal. Big deal, right? So we're always also saying, Kudos to the uh, CBM specialist because he's getting a tremendous amount of data here. It's not just the one test, even though it was probably one test taken. There's a number of different variable tests in there, like this test here, current signature analysis. What is this telling us? Right. If our tech support sees this, they immediately start to question a couple things. That the that there's a lot of load changes occurring rapidly, throwing frequencies into different bins, creating what we call this this elevated energy around the spectral peak or smearing of the spectrum. Uh, or, of course, there's another option that they're using the wrong probes, which they're not doing in this situation. They're using the right probes, still getting this increase in broadband energy uh, and smearing of the spectrum. So definitely it throws up the red flag. As always, it's great to look back at 2008. What did it show? This is a spectrum you'd expect to see. We're looking at the rotor bar pass frequency uh, involvement in terms of the pull pass, I should say, pull pass frequency relation to the 60 hertz fundamental frequency. It appears that the rotor bars are healthy in this situation. Yeah. Here's another great tool, right? We always say if you have a sister motor 
that does the same thing. Let's test it. Let's do the Sesame Street almost, the right? The Sesame Street theme, right? That's right. That's uh, which one of these is not like the other, right? The comparison's great. And so often we're faced with no historical data. We're blessed with historical data in this situation. But even better, we have uh, another comparison to, to look at. And you can see, again, 420 amps, steady state current, which we would expect out of our pumps. Right. And lo and behold, here's our culprit. Man, What's going on here? Good. It's not always we get these good pictures, but boy, we appreciate it when you guys send them to us. Uh, this is the inlet valve to the pump, obviously. This is a pump that's, that's basically uh, placed down into a, a river, a, a, a basin, whatever, the cooling tower basin, so that it's pulling water into it. Um, and you can see that the in bell or the inlet bell is broken, cracked. Now, some things to think about on this is uh, obviously that crack can create some some turbulence, some flow uh, along the diffuser that may not be able to correct that and uh, result in some uh, differential pressures that cause fluctuations. We have to consider that. We always are concerned about, well, when that stuff broke off, where did it go? Did it go inside the pump? Uh, you know, anything in, in that in, in this level of, of damage needs to be uh, acted on quickly. And so we do have a lot of concern that there was some turbulent flow through this pump. Sure. And as always, we repair it. And what's the next best thing to do? Right. You'll notice that, hey, take a follow-up test. Let's verify that our, uh, our, our maintenance, our repair work was effective. You notice the, the amperage jumped back up to 420. In previous tests, the amperage had dropped, which, you know, if the pump is not moving fluid, it's not going to draw as much power. And so you can see that the amperage is back up to normal, steady state. Exactly. And so we'll take another look at our DMOD spectrum. And, and we were at 1 dB. Now we're back down to... Uh, 2008 levels, right, yeah. which is exactly what we want to see. Exactly. And lastly, the cost of this failure would have been substantial had it occurred during peak season. Well, it's a utility. Where is peak season? That's right. I know we're burning plenty of power during this time frame, and everyone else is too. It's not just, I mean, the pump, obviously they're going to have to look into some internal damage, see if what's going on inside that thing, make sure that the pump can be repaired or refurbished. But the, the big issue is, you know, the loss of, of the ability to produce electric power during the peak season. And when you can prevent that, what are you doing? You're saving money, you're restoring value to the shareholders, you're just you're becoming more profitable. And when you can do that, obviously, in this tough economy, uh, kudos to you. And, and kudos to the CBM specialists who caught, caught this uh, early in the fault cycle. Yeah, this is a big-time job justification in that situation. <laughs> no. Well, thank you, Mr. Bethel, for coming in and sharing your information with us. I enjoyed being here. Thanks for having me. And thank you for paying attention as we went through this presentation and, and your, for your time. As always, if you have any information that you'd like to share with us or case studies that you'd like to share with us and we can put a PowerPoint together, we'd love to get, have it come to us. You can contact us at www.pdma.com or give us a call at 813-621-6463. Once again, thank you for your time and we enjoyed having you here.